us take a look at this example on discount. In this example, it says that a watch price at $160 is sold for $100. We want to find out what is the percentage discount. In order to find out what is the percentage discount, we need to know what is the discount amount. Since we see that the marked price is $160 and the sale price is $100, we can calculate the discount value which is 160 minus away $100 and we get $60. Then, we calculate the percentage discount by taking the discount value $60 over the marked price, which is 160 times 100%, which gives us 37.5%. Do take note that when calculating percentage discount, it should always be the discount value, which is $60 in this case, out of the marked price, since marked price actually refers to the original price. And that in this case would be $160. Therefore, we get the value of 37.5% as the answer for percentage discount in this question. Next, we look at this example. It says that the mark price of a washing machine is $600. A discount of 6% is given during a sale. We want to find out the sale price of the washing machine. For us to answer this question, we need to first know what is the percentage that the sale price actually represents. Since the mark price is given to be $600, that it refers to the original and that is our base, which is 100%. As a discount of 6% is given, we take 100% minus away 6% and that gives us 94%. So, the sale price has a representation of 94%. Or instead, we can also see it as 94% of the mark price will give us the sale price. Therefore, in our calculations, we will find the sale price to be 94%, which is 94 over 100 times 600, which gives us $564. And that is our answer for the sale price. In this third example, we are given that a sculpture is being sold for $533 after a discount of 18%. In the first part, we want to find out what is the mark price of the sculpture. So this $533 that we are given, we need to first understand what is the percentage that represents this, one, this $533. Because this $533 is the sale price, which is after a discount, that means that upon taking 100% minus away 18%, we get 82%, and 82% represents the $533. Then, our mark price is actually our base value or the original value, which, which is actually 100%. So, we are trying to find out what is 100%. Therefore, in our calculations, we can have 82% representing $533, followed by 100% to be 530 over, sorry, 533 over 82 times 100, which gives us $650. And therefore, the mark price is $650. Next, we take a look at part 2. Let's first read the question. It says that if a 10% discount is given on the mark price of the sculpture, before it is sold at a further discount of 8%, would the sale price still be $533? Show your working clearly. So to understand this question, we'll take a look at the first part of this sentence. It says that a 10% discount is given on the marked price. So we start off with the marked price, which we do not know. Then we proceed with giving this 10% discount. That is in this first phrase here. It proceeds to say that that it is sold at a further discount of 8%. So from this stage over here, it continues to give a 8% discount to arrive at the eventual sale price. And what this question is trying to ask is whether this eventual sale price is going to be $533. Where does this $533 come from? It is because in the original question, $533 is after 18% discount. 
So essentially, in this question, they are trying to ask whether a discount of 18% would be the same as applying a 10% discount first, then after that, an additional 8% discount. So will this process actually be the same as giving a direct 18% discount? I hope you have an idea in your head okay, to know what the answer could possibly be. The answer should actually be no. This direct 18% is different from breaking up into two parts of 10% followed by 8%. And the reason is because there is a different base value uh, for each time that a discount is being given. So let's do some calculations to check that out. So in the very first part, since we know that the mark price is $650 already, to find out what is this price over here after the 10% discount, that would actually be 90% left. So 90% out of the mark price would give us this value that we have here. So the price after 10% discount is 90% or 90 over 100 times $650, which is the mark price. And that gives us to $585. So we have $585 over here. Then it continues to give us an 8% discount. So with an 8% discount, that means that if this is were to, this were to be 100%, then this sale price will actually be 92%. So to find out what is the sale price, we will take 92%, which is 92 over 100 times a $585 to get $538.20. And therefore, we observe over here that the outcome of this process is 538.20, which is different from $533. And therefore, through this example, I want us to be aware that a direct 18% discount is different from having a 10% discount followed by a 8% discount. Likewise, even if I split it up into 9% and 9%, it will not match up with this direct 18%. That is because of the different base value each time that a discount is being applied. Hence, to round off this, uh, to wrap up this question, we say that the sale price is not five hundred and thirty-three dollars. We will now move on to goods and services tax examples. So let's start with a simple example first. In this question, it says that a piece of furniture costs six hundred and forty dollars before GST. Assuming that the GST is at 8%, we want to calculate the total amount of money Devi has to pay for this piece of furniture. So the total amount of money that Devi has to pay is inclusive of this 8% GST. So the original price of $640 before GST is actually 100%. And with the GST on top of it, that makes up a total of 108%. So the total of amount of money that Devi has to pay is actually representative of 108%. Therefore, to find out what is the total cost, we take 108% or 108 over 100 times $640 and we will get $691.20. Next, in the second example, we are told that a printer is sold for $642, which is inclusive of a 7% GST. We want to find out the marked price, or in other words, the original price of the printer. So this marked price, other than seeing it as the original price, it is also considered the price before GST. So this $642 is the price after GST, which is actually 107%. So 107% represents $642. In order for us to find out the mark price, that means that we are looking for 100% and that will be $642 over 107 times 100. Therefore, we get $600. In conclusion, we see that mark price would actually be $600 in this question. We will now move on to a slightly more complicated goods and services tax question. 
Before we look into the question, we need to understand that GST is calculated on top of service charge. So what this means is that we need to find out what is the service charge amount first, then we calculate our GST. Because after all, GST stands for Goods and Services Tax. So tax is being applied not just for the goods that we acquire, but also the services that we receive as well. So when we go to a restaurant where they provide us with the food, which is referred to the goods, okay, in the goods and services tax context, okay, we also receive services. For example, having our waiters and waitresses uh, bring our food from the kitchen over to our table. So that service itself, okay, has a price to be paid for and there is a tax to be given on top of this price that we pay for the services. Okay, so this is a very important concept and understanding that we need to be clear about when it comes to goods and services tax. So now, now let's begin uh, looking at the question. It says here that Imran has dinner with his family at a restaurant which offers a 10% discount. The mark price of the food that they order is $100. Given that there is a service charge of 10% and GST is at 8%, we want to calculate the total amount of money he has to pay. So now let's go about calculating to figure out what is our answer. Before that, we need to know that there is this 10% discount being given on the food. So the price after that discount okay, would be $100, removing this 10%, therefore 90% of the $100, which gives us $90. So we always consider the discount first by removing that okay, from the marked price. So price after discount, that will be $90. Then service charge is usually a certain percentage count on top of the food or rather the price of the food that you are going to pay for. So the price with the service charge will be 110%. Okay, so that we count the food as well as the services and that will be $99. Okay, so we are counting nine sorry, we are counting 110% here because we want to include the food prices as well as the service prices. Okay, so 110% in total. And that is $99. We next proceed to take into account the GST. So GST is counted on top of this price, okay, of the food and the service charge. So the price after GST will be 108% okay, of your $99. So 108 over 100 times 99 will give us $106.92. Therefore, the total amount of money that Imran has to pay will be $106.92. Now let's take a look at another example. In this question, it says that Kuma orders one set meal at a restaurant which offers a 20% discount. There is a service charge of 10% and GST is at 7%. Given that he pays a total of $23.54, we want to find the marked price of the set meal. So in this particular example, we are actually going to be calculating in reverse. So let's understand the question first. So we have our mark price, which is what we want to find. And this mark price is given a 20% discount. After the 20% discount, we can proceed with finding out what is the service charge of 10% and then finding out okay, what is uh, the eventual price of $23.54 after applying our 7% GST. So to arrive at $23.54, from the mark price, it goes through these stages here. Having this understanding about the stages will help us going in reverse to find out what is the marked price. So, first of all, starting with this $23.54, because this amount is after GST, so that means that if our original is 100%, okay, original referring to this amount here, Okay, 
this $23.54 would actually be 107%. Therefore, in our calculation, we have 107%. Oops, I'm sorry that I might have missed out a stroke over here. 107% is representative of $23.54 and 100% will be $23.54 over 107 times 100 and therefore we get $22. So the price before GST is actually $22. So now that we have already found out what is the price before GST, okay, which is $22, we will proceed to find out what is the price before the 10% service charge. So this price over here of $22 is actually after the 10% service charge, which is actually 110%. This 110% is if this amount here is actually 100%. So going in reverse again, 110% will be $22 and hence finding our 100% will be 22 over 110 times 100, hence we get $20. So the price over here is the price before service charge and that is $20. So now that we have found that this is $20, we will proceed with finding out our mark price. So from our mark price to this $20 over here, this $20 is after a 20% discount, which means that this amount is 80% and our mark price is 100%. So 80% represent, is representative of our $20 and 100% will be 20 over 80 times 100 and therefore our mark price will be $25. I hope you have a clear understanding about how marking out this process will help us to actually eventually compute our mark price itself of $25. Let us now take a look at commission questions. So in this question, we are given that a property agent sells a house for $320,000, of which he receives a commission of 1.5%. We want to calculate the amount of commission the agent receives. So the agent actually receives 1.5% of this amount here. So therefore, in order to calculate the amount of commission, we will take 1.5%, which is 1.5 over 100, times $320,000 and that would give us $4,800. So this is the amount of money that the commission that the agent actually receives as a commission. Then in another example, we are given that a property agent charges a, a commission of 3.5% on the selling price of a piece of property. Given that he receives a commission of $25,375, we want to calculate the selling price of the property. So this $25,375 is the amount he receives as commission. And that will mean that this amount of money is actually 3.5%. So 3.5% represents $25,375. Hence, in order for us to find out the selling price of the property, we, were, we are actually looking for 100%. Therefore, 100% will be 25,375 dividing by 3.5 and, and then multiplying by 100. And that would give us $725,000, which is actually the selling price of the property.